All right, everybody. So, we've discovered a new chud channel, a new anti-woke gaming chud channel called Andy Pants Gaming. Damn, this guy's about to crest over to 100k subs, like, tomorrow or something. This guy's at 99.4k subs. He's about to take over to 100k soon. As you can see, this guy is pretty much, uh, well... He, he's, he's one of the more, like, in-your-face about being bigoted, anti-woke creators. Are games, are gamers homophobic? And then the very previous video is, is this DEI the game? And it says gay shit. Starfield, Masterpiece or Disasterpiece, no views because it's not, like, anti-woke grift trash. Anything that this, this, this guy tries to make that's not culture war shit will never do well. And he's very quickly going to start to realize, you can see it happening, by the way. Like, this guy's channel, we're, like, watching in real time as he slowly starts to realize what actually does well for him. And he's, sl he's slowly transforming. It's so wild how explicit the path to, like, easy money on YouTube is to just complain about, like, minorities and, like, nerd media because nerds have such a big problem with women and minorities which is the claim he's i guess arguing against in that video that he most recently put out but he put out this video called the woke apocalypse is here very cringy title obviously which tells me we're gonna get some good memes out of this uh so let's watch let's see what this guy has to tell us let's learn about the woke apocalypse guys oh shit every company under the sun is owned by blackrock oh my god guys did, did you know that, like, three companies own every company you can think of? Man, no one's ever called this out before. Certainly no one on the left. Certainly nobody on the left who uh, advocates for or cares about worker equality or criticizes capitalism. You know, uh, nobody. Nobody. It's be a short video. I just have to get some stuff off my chest. So um, BlackRock is a trillion dollar investment company that is invested everywhere uh, from media to cars to oil to everything. Um, and yep, there are about three or four companies that own every single brand and company that you can recognize. For example, every single thing that you can think of that is a company is part of a totem pole of ownership. And it, it, it's really kind of a fun game to think about how far down the totem pole, or up the totem pole, I should say, you can, like, know off the top of your head, right? So for me, I know that uh, YouTube is owned by Google. Google is owned by Alphabet. Alphabet, I think, is owned by Microsoft? Ooh, shit. And Microsoft is owned by BlackRock, which I, actually, I think we can actually do right there, yeah. Um, so yeah. Companies are owned by other companies, and there is a massive monopoly at the top of the, at the top of the pyramid, of corporate capitalism. Y yeah, capitalism is pretty, pretty fucked, huh? Welcome to the club. Yeah, they keep saying that they're pushing for diversity. Um, you know, they've got these ESG scores that they're pushing. They they dog. Okay, so we're 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 dealing with some like, we're dealing with a dude who doesn't even try to make arguments. He's just like pumping out those videos and just making nonsense points pulled right out of his ass. Did you know that these companies are super pro-diversity and yet they're all owned by one company? That doesn't sound so diverse. Oh, Alphabet is its own company. My bad. Okay, well, well there you go. I thought Microsoft owned uh, Google, to be honest. Anyway, with that said... A lot of companies are owned by large investment companies. There's like four or five of them that own like all of the corporations in America that aren't like privately owned by like individual people. Um, and usually these big investment firms will also have shares in a bunch of companies. So to be fair, it's not so much that BlackRock owns all of these companies. It's more so that BlackRock owns a controlling share in all of these companies. Because investment companies like BlackRock are not really, they're not companies in the traditional sense. They aren't really providing a service so much as they are uh, owning pieces of a bunch of different companies across the entire economy um, in order to, uh, in order to get ahead, right? Like this is a, you know, it's diversifying your portfolio. Technically, 
if we want to make the like retard arguments about how diversity and capitalism and diversity of like racial demographics are the same, then let's go down this line. BlackRock is actually a really good investing firm. They've seriously diversified their portfolio. Look at how many companies they own from oil to entertainment to medicine to like payment processors to online shopping to tech to like we could go through this list and find so many transportation for Uber um, shopping Lowe's like or like just grocery shopping and, and you know, like like farmer like stuff you buy like your hammer or your rake or whatever from Lowe's anyway. um like gas stations, like CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News. That's what I mean when I say they're all owned by the same people, by the way. Um, yeah, like this is actually a, a very, very diverse portfolio. So if he wants to call this not diverse, I mean, he's actually wrong even in that line of logic because this is a very diversified portfolio. <laughs> Uh, this guy's stupid. Say that they're they're all about diversity. They're pushing for diversity. But have you ever wondered why? They to be very clear, by the way, they're not about diversity or pushing diversity. These people are pushing this weird conspiracy where these companies, for some reason, you'll have to fill in the blanks yourself, I guess. For the, some reason, there are like high up executives, employees, or you know, people in power in these companies in Hollywood and and you know, all realms of entertainment, media, and business. Um, who are pushing a woke, diverse, DEI, SJW, current day, the message, whatever they call it, um, ideology onto normal people, as they would say. Which, what they mean by that are, like, white, straight, male gamers and, like, nerd content media consumers. And the more radical figures like this, who don't just spend all their time complaining about diversity in media and leaving it at that for their fans to fill in the blanks, the more radical of people like this, I imagine this guy's probably friends with a fair few of those more radical content creators, uh, will outright state what they actually mean by this. The full conspiracy that a lot of creators like Critical Drinker, this guy, Mahler, uh, although apparently Mahler is just kind of like friendly with all of those people and doesn't actually do the anti-woke stuff, but... I really don't care. I don't care to make the distinction. The dude's the dude's constantly hanging out with like the biggest giga dumb fucks I could imagine on this website. I don't I I can't I can't really muster any any sympathy there. Regardless, um or charitability. Regardless, uh the more radical people in this sphere will outright state what they mean when they talk about this like agenda. Because companies have one agenda at the end of the day. Their bottom line making money. So the idea that, as they claim, these companies or people in high up positions of power in these companies would be pushing a progressive agenda that they constantly claim is costing these companies money. Like look at Disney, look at, uh, I mean, any of the things they claim go woke, go broke, right? Why are companies whose bottom line realistically is just to make as much money as possible, why do they have some ulterior motive to push woke politics? There seems to be an implication of like a motive beyond companies wanting to make money here but you know who knows what it could be um the more radical like i mentioned before will outright state what they think is that jews control all of business hollywood the media um you know businesses like corporations they think jews own blackrock and thus all the companies that blackrock owns um and they believe that the jews are controlling these companies with the goal of boiling the frog for white straight you know heteronormative Christian Americans, right? The idea is that you would become used to the ideas of the left through this media, and the even more radical of these figures will outright state that this is done with the means to an end of trying to normalize the idea of white replacement uh, among, like, the white, straight American population so that when it actually happens, we'll be complacent sheep and we'll let it happen. Of course, this guy's never going to go even close to as far as to admitting, you know, that's what this line of logic leads to. He's just going to complain about, like, diversity and equality and, oh, did you know that investment firms own, like, every company? Did you guys know that? And then try to make a conspiracy out of it. They keep emphasizing our differences? Like, if they really want us to come together, wouldn't you, in order to make people come together, you down... Because our differences should not keep us separated. That's why. Because when what you would claim is anti-racist is to completely ignore the concept of race, to never acknowledge it, to never um, acknowledge any racism or racial injustice. 
and to pretend as though everybody sees everyone else as a human being and um, there is no racism and racism has no impact on your life, your identity, where you came from, your family, your upbringing, um, you know, all these things, they have no realistic impact on your life. And if you consider race to be a thing that matters, then you're the real racist, right? Um, the fact is race does matter. Like, if you're someone who is black in America, then chances are your race matters a lot to you. Not because you think you're superior or something, but because it's going to have a pretty strong bearing on your life. It is unfortunately kind of a tell of this guy's life experience that he would make this argument, right? Because no, only like a white, privileged, relatively well-off dude uh, who's straight could make this argument that like talking about our differences is the bad thing. If he was part of any group that had those differences from what is considered normal, quote-unquote, white, straight, you know, male even, um, and cis, then he wouldn't be making this argument. Nobody would, because the idea that celebrating our differences is equivalent to segregating and discriminating based on those differences is a nonsense argument, and no one who makes it actually believes it. And if they do believe it, then Get them in a fucking straight jacket, dog. They're da they like don't let them use silverware. They're gonna hurt someone. <laughs> Downplay differences. You don't emphasize differences. But instead, what they do is they have ESG scores. They hire uh, diversity training coaches and people to go into these companies. I really like the ESG score thing is so funny to me because it just takes one Google search to figure out that ESG is not some like wokeness score for companies esg is a score associated with a particular company because if you are a consumer or um i think the term is market investor and you want to buy shares in a company or maybe you want to like go even further and like maybe short a company or something like whatever fuckery with stocks you're planning on doing um you have there are a lot of things you can take into account to evaluate the risk of an investment and one of those things you can take into account is the esg score um, there is not actually a conspiracy to wokeify people, despite how much it supposedly harms the bottom line of these companies. These companies, at the end of the day, have one sole goal, to make money and to improve their bottom line. And the fact is, this woke diversity stuff, as they call it, actually makes them more money. You can scream, go woke, go broke, until your lungs are, are empty and shriveled and your vocal cords are shredded and sore, but it will never change the fact that these companies are doing what makes them the most money, right? And so if you are going to invest in a company, like there is a very good chance, it, like unless you're the type of guy who goes to a casino wanting to lose, that you want to invest in a company that's going to create, that's going to have a good return on your investment. You want to buy low and sell at a higher point, right? And a good way to determine whether or not a stock is likely to improve and head northeast from the direction it's currently in is to look at a variety of different evaluations of that company of that stock to determine whether this is a good line of um, a good line uh, like a good share to buy right and ESG score is one of them ESG score accounts for a bunch of things from like the general social media presence of a company how much controversy they've gotten in for employees higher up CEOs spokespeople making. Um, you know, weird statements or having gaffes on national television, that kind of thing. Um, how their um, things such as like their carbon neutrality. So if they have like a massive carbon footprint every year, their ESG slip door is going to be pretty low because it's likely a lot of media corporations are going to talk about the fact that they have a huge carbon footprint. People aren't going to like that. People are going to boy boycott the company. People are going to be talking about it. It's going to hurt that company. It's going to hit hard its stock value. And if you're an investor, consumer or market investor, you don't want to be invested in a company that has a high chance chance of future controversy that's going to tank its shares in the stock market. I know I'm boring the fuck out of you here, but this is the actual reason for these things, like ESG score and what's actually happening here with these like uh, investment firms. But these guys are trying to turn it into some conspiracy because either A, they're pretending not to understand the stock market, or B, they just don't understand the stock market. And I don't really understand the stock market, to be clear, but I understand way more about it than these guys, I think, because they're, they're, this is a ridiculous insane thing to claim to emphasize our differences the, the way you get people to come together is by uh, de-emphasizing our differences in order to get us to come together so i just want to first point out that how strange it is that black blackrock keeps emphasizing our differences as a culture 
And so one of the things that they've done is they've taken a group um, like the LGBT, the LGBT group, which is only 3% of the American population, and they have... LGBT people are only 3% of the population, by the way. What is the uh, percentage of people who believe in, like, gay rights, I wonder? Actually, let, let's, check, let's check on that. Percentage of Americans who are LGBT. Oh, shit. God, I keep dropping my vape. It keeps, like, flickering my monitor. It's scary. In 2012, 3.5% of U.S. adults identified as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. The figure increased to 4.5% in 2017, 5.6% in 2020, 7.1% in 2021, while the latest figure from 2023 is 7.6%. So we can assume it's gone up to around 8% for 2024 or more. So what number did he claim there? So what year did he decide um, people stopped actually being gay in? The LGBT group, which is only... 3% of the American population. Okay, so what year did he decide people stopped being gay in? Um, prior to 20... So yeah, 2012 or 2011 is when he, I guess, decided that like the stats stopped mattering, I suppose, because Gallup, like, Gallup polling and Williams Institute, NPR, Pew Research Center, they're all reporting about 7 to 8% of Americans in 2024 identify as a uh, LGBTQ. So this guy's just dead wrong. Like, several times wrong. Like, he's off by several times the number he just cited. So, with that in mind, uh, even if 8%, you want to say, is not a large amount of the population, why does that fucking matter? What What is the point being made here, anyway? Like, he's wrong, but even if he was right, what would be the point? <laughs> and they have put them to the forefront um, not in order to get us to come together, not in order to uh, minimize our differences, but they're emphasizing the things that make us different. And so, uh, uh, and, and if you don't think that there's a satanic tone here, um, there's all kinds of alignments between devil worship and, and... Okay, I forgot. Okay, a lot of these people, like, unironically believe in, like, they, the Bible, and it all actually happened. That's what a lot of these people believe. Like, unironically, they believe in demons and Satan and Satanists. Like, they're actually satanic panic virgins. So, with that in mind, uh, I do think this stuff is, like, you know, visually kind of cringe. And that's a big reason why it's being shown here. Because 99% of people who see an image like this are probably going to cringe. But um, most of, like, the satanic... Um, like, uh, religious organizations around the country aren't actually satanic groups. They're actually just, like, they're actually charities and nonprofits that are uh, using the charity, or not the charity, the church tax exemption that the U.S. Uh, Republicans have provided for Christian fundamentalist churches to make as much money without paying taxes as possible. They take advantage of that, um, you know, using Republicans' own shit against them, and oftentimes pay for and uh, provide housing, medical care, uh, all sorts of things, including uh, uh, prenatal and postnatal, and sometimes even um, abortion care uh, for uh, people who need it. Like, they'll, they'll pay for it, and they'll provide you transportation and stuff. A lot of these nonprofits, and a lot of them call themselves Satanists because, you know, it triggers the right. And if they call themselves Satanists, they can claim a religious tax exemption, which is, like, the biggest F you to the Republicans because it's something they did to help themselves get around paying taxes. So yeah, it's 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 real nice. That's why these people are like this. They're 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 probably part of a nonprofit that's like helping kids who've been like raped by their homophobic conservative stepfather get an abortion and have housing where they like aren't abused every day. That's probably what these folks are up to. Helping like kids who have been abused. And and Satanism and the LGBTQ movement um, on the right here was just something, this is random, but uh, Celine Dion I saw recently was pushing for a, for a, her satanic clothing line. Who remembers like Elon Musk and the right freaking the fuck out over, no, it wasn't Elon Musk, but it was the people that Elon Musk now supports, um, freaking out over the Diablo event. There, there was like a, a, a big release party for Diablo Immortal and um, they had like, or maybe it was Diablo 3, I forget, or Diablo 4. Um, they had the, the, like, demon lady who's on the cover of the game. Like, they had an animatronic or something of her in the main, like, hall. And someone record like, someone took a recording of just her and then uploaded it. Like, it took, like, then a conservative took it, uploaded it, and claimed that it was an L.A.-based huge satanic ritual rally. Because this is, like, there's a massive release party for Diablo 4, like, one of the biggest game franchises ever. 
the conservatives on Twitter took videos from it and presented it as if it's a massive get together of Satanists in L.A. No mention of Diablo or that it's a release party for a game or anything. They presented it as if it's a satanic ritual get together of ten, like thousands of people, thousands of people in like a, a hall at, at a game event, at a triple A game event. Um, th th that's what they're showing pictures of, claiming it's a satanic get together uh, that's like hidden in L.A. Wild shit, dude. Wild, wild shit for kids, which is absolutely bonkers insane. But first off, I just want to begin with that thought. If they really want us to come together, why would they emphasize our differences? And the reason why is because they make money when we're divided. Ah, okay. So they still somehow make money, but also go woke, go broke? Wait, so are you seeding, are you seeding the point that go woke, go broke is a thing? Because most of this guy's contemporaries would argue that if you go woke, then you go broke. That, like, there will be a karmic and market punishment for daring to pander to the message or whatever um, if you do that. Like, you will be punished for it. But apparently, if they divide us by making this woke content, they make more money. So are they not going broke by going woke? Interesting. Let's see what this guy's arguments are. At least they're different. This is something new, at least. I've never heard this argument before. They make more money when we're when we're divided and we can't. And the big number two, two reason is that if they can keep playing us off of each other, we can never come together and actually solve anything. This is why oh, Morgan no. Freeman. No, yep, yep, no, 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 yep, we're getting the Morgan Freeman quote. Do you want to know what Morgan Freeman famously said? I literally quoted Morgan Freeman when talking about what this guy believes and how stupid his ideas are. Morgan Freeman had the most retarded quote you can possibly imagine. Do you want to know what Morgan Freeman said when he was asked, how do we defeat racism? Mind you, he's probably walked this back because this was like 30 years ago. He said, stop talking about it. Like, stop talking about the fact that I'm a black man and you're a white man. Stop talking about racists and racism and, and race and, you know, stop talking about our differences. It was a really cringe take, but chuds, conservatives, and even me as a little chuddy white teenager used to love that quote and love being like, hey, you know this famous beloved old black guy? He agrees with me that caring about racism is cringe. See? I'm not racist. I'm actually the anti-racist. It's the most cringe fucking shit ever. Because I, what I love is that this is a grown man peddling the quote that I, as a teenager, used to justify my, like, cringy, like, like Norman is friend, exactly. In, in a random video I saw recently, he, he told this guy who was pushing the Black Lives Matter shit, he said, stop talking about our differences. And Morgan Freeman nailed it. And this guy had nothing to say because... The way to get people to come together is actually to not talk about our differences, but to emphasize our similarities. But guys, uh, uh mind you, there, there's not really an emphasis of like our differences in the media they call woke. By the way, like they'll be for an example, they'll be for example a character who is gay, and the character will be like you know ob like openly gay. Like they'll be in a gay relationship, or they'll talk about the fact that they're interested in someone of the same sex or gender right um to a conservative like this that is focusing on our differences and thus a bad form of representation but a good form of representation would be if you had like a really like a piece of media and you know you like the characters and stuff and uh you know you, you would just like assume they're all straight i guess if you're like a straight guy because you just assume everyone else is straight until like proven otherwise uh, you know, that's just, I assume gay people do that too, maybe. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, they assume that, that the characters are straight until proven otherwise. And then, like, at the very end, or ideally after the media is done, like, the author, like J.K. Rowling did, says, oh, yeah, by the way, that character was gay. It has no bearing on the story, and you would never be able to tell by, you know, the original media itself. But, you know, that character was gay. Pretty much this guy, um, here, gay people I respect meme. Hilariously, the guy who made this meme is now like an LGBT, like pro-LGBT ally um, who regrets making this meme and finds it a ridiculously cringe. He made it when he was 14, I believe, 13. Mind you, this is the like what the, the people that these content creators are trying to appeal to are teenagers, like 13 year olds who think like this. 
Gay people I respect, acts like a normal human being, has a personality, doesn't it force upon you the fact that they're gay, literally is a normal person that you can be friends with. Gay people I do not respect with like the rainbow hair and the nose ring and they're angry. Um, the gay people I do respect though would never uh, break conventional uh, dress code conventions, you know? Gay people I do not respect. Sexuality is the focal point of their existence. Rainbow flag everything and everywhere, including but not limited to profile picture, clothing, and jewelry. That's right, guys. Can't they, they don't respect you if you're if you're proud of being gay at all and have like rainbow stuff. Complains about straight people con consistently. Dresses like a clown to show the world how gay they are. So you, you're not allowed to present in a way that's against the uh, dress code of society. And then this ended up coming out. Guys, okay, I'll never live this down. I'm the person who created this meme. When I was like 13, I was deep into the anti-SJW culture war shit and made an MS Paint comic that would storm that would storm the internet. No, I'm not straight. I've got a bit of character. Pro I've done a. I've got a bit of character progression since then. I forgot they're not even straight. They figured out they were LGBT. Years later, I am now an NB by Demi Boy. I will never live down the hundreds, maybe thousands of times this image has been reposted by homophobic people, but at least I can proudly proclaim that even the most cringe people can become based. So at the end of the day, content creators like this fucking loser, um, while he is blowing up pretty quickly, like he'll probably be at like 500,000 subs by midway next year, um... He is appealing to literal teenagers, and those teenagers are going to grow out of this stuff. Because the arguments he's making only make sense to, just like that meme maker explained, 13-year-olds who are already lost in the anti-SJW rabbit hole, right? Anyway, this guy's a loser, but I wish him luck. Um, hopefully, hopefully things go well for him. Not! Haha! <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this segment... No matter when, where, or what you're watching from me, consider dropping a like. Every thumbs up that you drop on my channel really does mean a lot. It goes a long way in helping the channel. And it makes the algorithm put my videos in front of other people, so it really helps a lot. You can subscribe and ring the bell icon as well. <coughs> oh my god, I have to burp so much. Uh, you can like, subscribe, turn on the bell icon to turn on all notifications, and comment down below if you haven't already. It helps the channel a ton, so I really appreciate it. Follow my social medias link down below if you want to see more from me on other platforms, including joining my fan discord through the link in the description. It's the main hub of my community, and it's completely free to join. I post all my new announcements for streams, videos, and everything in there, so you won't miss anything. And I do gaming events, call-in streams, and watch parties hosted in there. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to join. And of course, finally, if you have the money for it and you want to support me directly financially, you can always do so, and I'd really appreciate it if you donate, subscribe, or gift a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, or support me through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, Patreon, or buying merch at the Streamlabs link down below. But regardless of how you support the stream, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.